The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para-X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. Oh, hell no! Whatever! The following program contains opinions expressed by the Dead Zone. If you find this broadcast offensive, lighten up, candy ass. What? Oh my gosh. It's a radio show. Hell yeah! That's what I'm talking about. Power up request received. Initiating systems. Powering up transmitters. Welcome to the Dead Zone. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Heal this. WDZI Digital Broadcast. Hey, it's the Dead Zone, Paranormal Radio Show, Sunday, April 28th. Shadow people, what are they? Are there different kinds? That's our topic of discussion for tonight's show. But first, I want to remind you uh, about the Mid-South tickets. We have nine left for the Mid-South Paranormal Convention uh, that's in Kentucky. All you need to do to get your free ticket is to email michelle at michelle.deadzone at gmail.com. Hell yeah. I'm ready. And you get a free ticket. Non-monetary value. You have to have your ID at the door to get in. But, I mean, hey, it's a free ticket. What else do you want? We'll be coming right back with Michelle and Scott Blake. But first, let's do a check of the news. Paranormal news. Hey, it's Michelle again, doing paranormal news and events on the Dead Zone. This week's episode is brought to you again by me, Michelle Poy, Associate Broker at Seasons of Indiana Real Estate. Contact me for all your real estate needs through my Dead Zone email, michelle.deadzone at gmail.com. That's Michelle with two L's, M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E dot deadzone at gmail.com. This episode is also brought to you by K.D. Wakefield, the author of a new suspense thriller called Murderous Masquerade. This is available in paperback or Kindle, so order your copy today on Amazon. Last week, I talked about the problem I was having, smelling smoke all the time. So uh, an article I was reading talked about the possibility of it being a curse or a hex. So it talked about doing a cleansing with an egg. I did the experiment. I said I was going to give an update this week. I have still been experiencing the smell of smoke. I consulted a good friend of mine who is a medium and she told me that what she was being told was that it did have anything to do with a curse, but that it was actually damage to my nasal passages from recurring sinus infections, which I've had extremely horribly the last couple of years. I don't know why the ENT didn't say anything about this, but I am currently using some saline drops and it is easing up. I actually am smelling it right now, but it is getting a little bit better. So hopefully that's going to take that away. We are going to uh, talk a little bit about the passing of Lorraine Warren this week. I'm sure many of you have heard that she passed away on April 18th at the age of 92. She was married to Ed Warren, who has passed away back in 2006. It was said that she could actually see people's auras at the age of seven or eight, but that she was scared to tell anyone at that time because that she felt that they might think she was crazy. And L- Lorraine did meet Ed when she was very young. She was only 16, but Ed could tell immediately that there was something very unique about her. So Ed and Lorraine were two of the most well-known paranormal investigators and they inspired some movies they wrote books together some of the more popular horror movies that were inspired by their investigations include the amityville horror the haunting in connecticut and the conjuring 
Uh, the books that they wrote together, some of them, you can look them up, are Graveyard, Ghost Hunters, The Haunted, In a Dark Place, Werewolf, Satan's Harvest, and The Demonologist. Now, she and her husband founded the New England Society for Psychic Research, and they built themselves a research center. In the basement of the research center, they created the Occult Museum. If you've ever been there, please email me and let me know what it was like, if you had any experiences while you were there. I've obviously never been there. I really would love to one day visit. And during their investigation careers, they had over 10,000 cases that they attended. And they were able to accumulate many items that were claimed to be haunted that they had in the museum. One of them is a Raggedy Ann doll named Annabelle. Now, they kept her in a locked glass case for safety. And the doll is said to be occupied by the spirit of Annabelle Higgins. Now, the previous owners of the doll had numerous incidents where she would change positions. She would be found in a different room from where she was left. Uh, she had been seen with what looked like blood oozing out of her. And they would find notes left around saying, help me or help us. And they were always written on parchment paper, which they stated they never had parchment paper. The Warrens said that the spirit was looking to possess a human host. So they took the doll, they sprinkled holy water on it, and they locked it up for safekeeping. So Lorraine's son-in-law confirmed that she did die very peacefully in her home while she was asleep and he goes on to say that she was a remarkable loving compassionate giving soul she loved animals and she contributed to many animal charities and rescues this is rick mccullum of the hollywood ghost hunters and you're listening to the dead zone Zone WDZR TV Worldwide. Wrapping up this week's episode of Paranormal News is upcoming events. Spooked Productions presents a very special event at the Randolph County Asylum in Winchester, Indiana. On May 11th, the Booth Brothers with Rachel Booth will be having a ghost hunt at the Historic Asylum. The twist here is that they will be filming your experiences to use for their new movie, The Attached. Tickets are available through Eventbrite, but you need to get yours soon because it is a very limited ticketed event. Make sure to tell them that you heard about this through the Dead Zone podcast on ParaX. On June 28th through the 30th, we will be at the Mid-South Paranormal Convention in Shepherdsville, Kentucky. Go to their Facebook page for a list of all the awesome people that will be there. It's going to be a really good time. If you've never been there, you really should check it out. We are giving away 10 free tickets, and all you have to do is email me at michelle.deadzone at gmail.com and say, hell yeah, I'm ready. Now, rules do apply limit one per household, there's no monetary value, and you must be present with your photo ID. If you have any upcoming events that you would like me to talk about, please email me at, please email me at michelle.deadzone.com. That's Michelle with two L's, M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E dot deadzone.com. I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. This is a top to uh, you know what we use on stage, but it's very, very special because if you can see, yeah, the numbers all go to eleven.
Everybody wants you Millions of people are affected by the Para-X bug. I realize that it is something that will stay with me for the rest of my life and long into the afterlife as well. If you have the Para-X bug, there is hope. With a nightly visit to the Para-X website and intensive past life regression therapy, I can control it. Even with the Para-X bug, I can still lead an active life of radio show hosting, paranormal investigating, evidence checking, attending conferences, book writing, keeping up with the latest technology, and still keep my 40-hour-a-week day job. If you think that you have the Para-X bug or know someone who might, visit para-x.com. And remember, you are not alone. I am not alone. I. 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 I am not alone. The Para-X bug may cause the urge to chase shadow people, visit exotic haunted locations, adopt a pug wedgie, or spend all of your time trying to figure out the laws and principles of paranormal investigation. Listening to Para-X may increase these effects. Sudden visions of full-body apparitions or feeling the covers being pulled off you in the middle of the night by unseen hands may also be signs of exposure to the Para-X bug. The use of Para-X may be habit-forming, and an overwhelming desire to provoke spirits may be a serious side effect. If these symptoms last more than four hours, you should quickly consult a trusted witch and have her cast a what the hell are you thinking spell on you. If symptoms persist, please contact the Para-X Radio Network Homeland Security Team for further instructions. The Para-X bug may cause urges for late night speaking with spirits and ghosts. Listening to Para-X may increase these effects. Overwhelming desire to try provoking a spirit may be a serious side effect. Those with Para-X bug effects lasting more than four hours should consult Para-X or see a professional. Sudden outbursts at the mention of orbs may be a sign of exposure to the Para-X bug. Use of Para-X may be habit-forming. Use caution when engaging in Para-X chat. Your source for everything paranormal. Para-X. It's time for the Metal Minute, here on the Dead Zone. And here we are with the Metal Minute. This is Scott Blake, my very first Metal Metal Minute. Minute. Awesome. Um, So, I have one of my favorite bands of all times, um, Static X. Static X, cool. Love Static X. Right. I was I was literally heartbroken when Wayne passed. Right. Um, it was just it's like you know one of those you know way too soon things. Right. So um, this may be old news to some people, but it's news worth repeating. Right. Um, but uh, they found some unfinished studio sessions. Oh, cool. Of you know featuring Wayne Static's final words. So um, the original members. Um, started working on a kind of a tribute album um, while they were doing this and I, from what I understand they were pretty much finished with the album mm-hmm. they found more tracks, more tracks. so that. that delayed the release which is totally fine with me because you know the more the better right um, you know because that's what she said be a double yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right be a, but, double, uh, a double album maybe yeah so um, yeah so the the album is due to be released um, I think they said like the second quarter of this year, so later this year sometime. Cool. Um, now, how how old is that band? But how, how how long have they been around? the The first album was Wisconsin Death Trip in nineteen ninety nine. Nineteen ninety nine. Yeah. Wow. They had seven albums, or there will be seven albums total from, since that. Right. Um, and that also includes the new album, the tribute album called um, Project Regeneration. Right. 
Um, now, wouldn't it be cool if they would come out with a complete set? You know what I mean? Oh, I'm sure they will after this. That'd be awesome. Yeah, That'd it be would. really cool. Um, the uh, like I said, it was it's with the original band members that are doing this on the album. They had guest vocalists, um, which includes David Draymond from Disturbed, mm-hmm. Ivan Moody from Five Finger Death Punch, right. <laughs> um, Des Ferrara. Devil Driver. A lot of hard hitters there, right? there were others, too. Um, So there's guest vocalists on the album, but, um, you know, with any new album, what comes after that? A tour, tour, right? right. Mm -hmm. So they are doing a tour, which is the 20th anniversary Wisconsin Death Trip Tour. Oh, cool. Um, Now, with this, they have a singer. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. He's uh, he, he's a secret singer. He it's someone that already established a name for themselves uh-huh. and uh, as a vocalist. Uh-huh. But joining um, Static X, he didn't want to re- reinvent himself or to become known as the singer of Static X. Right. Um, and the band didn't want to replace Wayne. They right. just needed someone to play the part. Mm-hmm. So. So he's, um, not, he's, he's not gonna put a bucket on his head, is he? Not you a bucket, what, but you know he does wear a mask. About, right? Okay, yeah. Um, he does wear a mask. Um, it resembles Wayne, and it has the hair that stands straight up like oh, Wayne's cool. hair. Right. Um, but they did this only because, like I said, they didn't want. They're not replacing Wayne. Right. They're paying tribute to Wayne. Right. Absolutely. So. Same thing with ACDC. Right, and this, th- nobody knows who the singer is. Right. He goes by the name of Zero. Okay. Spelled with an X. Okay. Um, but that tour starts in June, mm-hmm. which is coming up real soon. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would say, you know, if if you're any kind of Static X fan, you need to get your tickets as soon as possible. Oh, yeah, and where can they do that? Um, Just Google it. Google it, I yeah, guess. Yeah, go to Ticketmaster yeah. or something. Yeah. You go to the... Or I know, bet... I bet you could just go to their website. Go to yeah. go to Static X website. They do have the tour dates there. There you go. Um, there is an Indianapolis date that I'm going to. There you go. So, <laughs> um, yeah, that should be really cool. So, yeah, it, and uh, Disturbed, dude. That, that's one of my favorite bands too. So that, yes, I'm very anxious to hear the album, to hear the different vocalists. Yeah. Um, to see what they do. I, I mean, but I'm even more excited to hear new Wayne Static. Right. You know, it's, right. it's awesome that they found Some old tapes. these old, yeah. these tracks that were just discarded. His final works that they, I guess, I don't know if they didn't know they had them or they couldn't find them, but they found them and now they're... Well, maybe there were maybe there were things that he was working on that just didn't make the cut and, you know, just shelved them. Could be. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just put them on the shelf. <laughs> well, that's cool. Well, that's awesome. Anything else you got coming up? Um, that's pretty much it for this time around. Okay. Sounds good to me. So remember, new Static X coming out, man. Get your tickets. Go to the website and go to their Facebook page. I'm sure there's And you can pre order the album, too. So. Pre order the album. There you go. So, hey, don't miss on. Don't, don't miss on. Don't miss out on that. We'll be right back. Okay, we're back. This guy right next to me is Scott Blake. On the phone is Michelle again. Hey, Michelle. Hey. Hey. Michelle. And this Hi. is Lee. This is Lee speaking. Um, like we said, we're going to be talking about what we really don't have that much experience with as shadow people, other than the fact that evidently we have one in our house. Um, but uh, Scott's done a little bit of research, and I know Michelle has. So, what exactly are they? Do we do we know? Does anyone know? Um, not everyone at once. Right? Not every, yeah, not everybody. Yeah, no one talk at once. Yeah. <laughs> I I looked up a lot of um, stories and of course there's Wikipedia that you can look up just about everything. And I mean, it does have a description 
if a little shadow person is the perception of a patch of shadow as a living humanoid figure, particularly as interpreted by believers in the paranormal or supernatural as the presence of a spirit or other entity. Um, and then they go on to talk about under history and folklore, uh, obviously it's been used and talked about in a lot of different religions, you uh, use in stories, folklore, and legends. And on Coast to Coast AM, it was a topic that uh, where the Art Bell spoke about on April 12, 2001, said that it was, this was the first time the topic of shadow people was discussed at length on the show. And it was with Native American elder Thunder Strikes, who was also known as Harley Swift Deer Reagan. Um, so what you're saying is basically it was all started just like any other... Oh, any, uh, well, for example, um, Slender Man, basically, it was perpetuated by Art Bell no. on the radio show. No? I'm not, saying, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that they were one of the first ones to talk about it at length. Okay. I found that there was something that showed that shadow people were, di- were discussed even in ancient Egyptian times. Wow, okay. Right. Um, there's a, a page you can go to. It's called the Official Shadow People Archives. It's kind of a blog where people submit their stories um, to see if, if anyone else has the same experiences. And there's a lot of different types of experiences that they've had, different things that happened when a shadow person appeared. Right, and different categories, evidently. The hat man, the cloak right. man, like you said, yeah. I, I found five categories. Five categories. The, the positive uh, shadow people, um, the negative, um, the red-eyed, the hooded, and, of course, the one that's most popular is the hat man. The hat man, yeah. Now, I, I just... I. It, that's what I want to know. What is the difference? What separates one from the other? You know, you know what I mean. Does that make any sense at all? Yeah, but well, how, we, how would we really even ever know that? Well, that's I that's guess. the thing. I, why does one have a hat? Why did, why is one considered malevolent and one considered uh, what did you say? Uh, um, the first one. There's the positive. The, the positive negative. one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and the one that, that you and I, Michelle, talked about this afternoon was. Uh, Evidently, they're seen quite often, I, I'm assuming, in nursing homes and rehab centers and things like that as a uh, harbinger of death. Well, uh, let's see. The story about that, where was that? All right, it says here, this lady uh, said that I'm a nurse and I work in a nursing home on the rehab unit. My experience with shadow people has been in this facility and one of the patients is going to die. It doesn't have to be on my unit, just one of our residents. Um, sometimes I can hardly pay attention as they are running and disappearing in the hallways or into the walls. My coworkers are now aware and scared of the sightings, but they, they know it is time for someone to depart for life. I once saw one in my house, which terrified me. My sons with their friends were going to the other part of the house, and I saw the shadow following them. And that night, one of the boy's brothers died in an accident on the highway. There is a room at the facility I'm uneasy about. I choose not to spend too much time in that room when there is a patient in there. I was outside the door of that room and the shadow person rushed past me, scaring me. They never get that close. There are other co-workers who also have seen them. I'm so glad that other people see them. So they have have been other people, uh, other co-workers there. That that was going to be my next question. Why is it just her Mm -hmm. and not uh, anyone else there seeing this? Right, no, once she made them aware of it, then they started seeing it. Oh, okay. Huh. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Power of suggestion. You know this is what I'm thinking. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Hmm. But that being I, said... I, I don't know. I, I, I don't really agree with... I mean, there's always power of suggestion, yes. I, I do agree that that, that does happen. Um, I kind of also feel like, though, that sometimes... People are aware of things that they their brain dismisses, yeah, um, because it's just too much for them, so they can't rationalize it. So they just their brain chooses for them, 
Right. And there is too. There is too the uh, the, the somewhat. I'm not sure it's, it's it's a real connection, but the connection between the shadow people and sleep par- uh, par- paralysis. Oh yeah, uh, there's a lot of stories about people having that problem with uh, waking up and having a shadow figure on top of them, choking them, right. uh, pushing down on them, floating above them. Right, but is it always a is, a, is it always a shadow? Uh oh, did you drop your phone? No, I didn't do anything. Well, what was that? <laughs> that was weird, man. I heard no sound on my end. You didn't hear anything? No. Nothing. Wow. Now, now kind of to what we were just talking about, and like what Lee and I were talking about before we actually uh, started recording, was um, the fact that the, most of the time that people are seeing shadow people are during times of sleep. But... Like I told him, I, I the, the the shadow people that I've seen in my house um, was just any day, any time during the day. Any time during the day, yeah. which was mainly um, when I first moved into the house. I, we bought the house; it was in bad shape. I had to do some work on it before we moved in. So the the, the two weeks that I spent on working on this house mm-hmm. before we moved in, I constantly saw. Pe- what I call peekers. Peekers, right? Um, which were, is what we have. Which was yeah, a shadow figure that was they were peeking around doors and corners, right? Constantly this whole time, and then after we moved in, it started to slow down. And after we moved in, we I basically uh, fixed up the house so that it was ready to move in. And then after we moved in, we picked a room at a time to totally you know. Fix up and yeah, paint spend your time on, yeah. Do all that. Concentrate on. So right. over time, um, you know, we're we're getting the house totally finished, and during that time, they slowly started kind of slacking off. I didn't see them as often. Right. And then I I had this kind of like I realized something. I was like, well, wait a minute. When I first when we first got here, I saw them all the time. Mm-hmm. The house was in shambles. Right. And then as we fixed up the house... Now, do you think, was, was there a lot of mold and that kind of thing in the house? Do you think that might have had something to, to do with affecting your, you know, your, your perception? No. Not a lot of mold, nothing like that? Well, there was a little, but nothing, yeah. Right. Nothing that's going to affect me. Right. Um, especially <laughs> after we moved in. I mean, because after I had patched holes and did this and did that, and then after we moved in, everything was clean. Right. And we saw them. I mean, I still saw them often. Right. And, but the more I did to the house, up until it was to the point where everything was done, everything was fixed up and painted and this and that and the other, now I don't see them at all. Right. So. Is that you don't see them or, or you're so used to them, you dismiss them, you ignore them? Well, I can't say that I don't see them because every once in a while I do. Right. I do see something. Right. But in the beginning it was all the time. Like, a few times a day. Right. And Per- peripheral what, vision is like, what was that? Right. Yeah. And what my wife and I discussed was we, we, f- we both feel that um, these were, um, I, I don't know if I'm going to use the right word, spirits or whatever attached to the house yeah. that were unhappy with the condition of the house. This was where they lived and it was in shambles. And right. The more I did to it, the more they were pleased with it, and now that they're content and we're content because it's all fixed up, right. I don't see them as often. Right, except for in your, in your workshop. <laughs> <laughs> Those yeah. are the real ones. Those are the real ones. The okay. real monsters right. are in the shop. Right. <laughs> Which, yeah, I guess we should note that if someone's new and listening, I'm a special effects artist. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Very, 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 very good one too. You can check his stuff out at Your Dream Creations. Awesome stuff. But. I had a question. I don't know if any, e- either one of you know, or if someone listening knows, you can send an email in. Absolutely. But do I? I did some reading and I watched some videos and listened to some people talk about uh, the shadow people. But do children see more shadow people than adults? I, in my personal opinion, I think children are more open to seeing not just shadow people, but but anything and everything. Because mm-hmm. they have an open mind, and unlike like people tell me, like Michelle tells me all the time, I'm so closed off. 
I don't. <laughs> I don't allow it. I don't. You know. I don't see it as it, as much as I would like to. I don't see it, but I, I I think so. I think children are more apt to experience right. these things. You you did admit that you have seen a, a peeker. I have seen a peeker. Around. I have seen peekers, and, and I, was, I, have, I was gonna go I have there seen and that be dirty. Every but once in a while. But yeah. I did see the shadow person, an actual shadow person, one day, and it was um, in the middle of the day. It, the lights were on in the house. It wasn't yeah. dark. Yes. And I was sitting in the living room, and it was just a black outline, basically, right. of, of what looked like a man, and it, it looked like he was wearing a fedora type hat. All right. So we, there we go. We've got a. Yes. But there were no it. eyes. The one I saw had no eyes. And I was talking to Brandon earlier because he's seen different things. And yes. What he has seen. Has red like eyes. A, a, small shadow, he said it was shorter than him, Yeah. Um, and that it had, it had white, red. Right? It had white, 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 bright eyes. Oh, okay, I thought he said it had, it had red glowing eyes, I mean, that was kind of, that's a, that was going to be a call back to Randolph County, where they say that they have the crawler, or whatever that is, like three feet tall with the red eyes. Yeah, no, this, this was the one when he was out in the office. Yeah, looking into the house when it was all dark. All right, I was I was I was telling Scott about that little incident that happened, and uh, mm-hmm. he uh, yeah, again, um, I had accidentally locked my son out in our office, <laughs> and <laughs> I, it's not it's I know it's it's horrible. I, I feel so bad. I really think he has PTSD. <laughs> I, really do. I think it, it really it really. And he, he actually does. I mean, he will, he has told us, and even his, he, he says that his friends have seen these things. Uh, for example, in the garage, just walking. We live we live in an old strip pit way out in the middle of nowhere. So, I mean, there's no one around. There's nothing but trees and and what have you. But uh, when he's out walking around just doing what, what a you know, kid does, he says he's seen these things. He's seen these black, huge, shadowy figures dark behind so trees. He, yeah, what he sees that he says are like almost anorexic looking. They're tall and really Really gaunt. Thin. Yeah, really, really gaunt things, yeah. And so that plus... And they tilt their head at him. And his buddy that's here right now, um, he because one day when the, all of them were here out walking, um, they all saw the same thing. And it kind of tilted its head at him. Right. Did the old Michael Myers look? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's how they described it. Right. Yeah. I'm thinking of the the I don't know what you call it the mother alien from e, from from um, <laughs> oh yeah you get it come it on. lost me yeah, okay um, yeah. what happens Close Encounters oh yeah the okay. tall thin alien that stops and kind of turns his head at okay yeah I wonder if it looked like that maybe I don't know which yeah, brings me to okay. I also read that, or I didn't read, I was listening to some videos on YouTube while I was working. Um, someone brought up a point that um, some people think that shadow people could actually be time travelers. Time travelers. Right? Yeah. Or aliens. Or, I that dear I, yes, aliens. aliens. Yeah. <laughs> um, just, yeah, so... And also, I also heard that um, it's like the form that someone takes when they're having an out-of-body experience. Right. Just like a ecto, well, not ectoplasm, but um, what's the word I'm looking for now? Are you not, oh my God, I'm, I'm, here I go. I'm not going to remember it until we start talking, so go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I mean those... Ethereal, there you go. An ethereal form. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, those weren't... Now, the time travelers and aliens and out-of-body experience type shapes, the, from what... Everything that I listened to, those weren't, like, the popular opinion. Right. But those were some that were brought up. Right. Um, but an, another thing that seemed to be brought up more was their inter- interdimensional beings. Right. That seems to be a real popular theory. Right. Yeah, around that's, that's yeah. in a lot of the stories. Yeah. Yeah, there was, um, going back to the, the alien uh, 
there was a story here that I found about that actually that says, um, let's see, they were going through tattoos, da 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 da, the alcohol and they abuse the husband, had to move back into a mom's house with their children, moved to their old childhood home, that bedroom, and let's see, and that the night question, I woke to find a dark shadowy figure standing over me. The outline looked like my husband's tall and possibly with a hat. My first thought was, what is my husband doing here? Then I quickly realized it couldn't be him as he was on the other side of the country. I then became scared as I thought that the figure must be an intruder. My heart started pounding. I blinked and the figure disappeared suddenly. I turned the light on and looked at my clock. It was 3 a.m. precisely. The feeling from the shadow person was not one of a negative energy. It felt like a being from somewhere else. I thought maybe it was an alien. It scared me due to its realness and my shock at finding someone in my room. I knew the figure wasn't a ghost. For the next two nights, I had dreams that came true the next day, which I thought was strange. On a personal level, I seemed to be going through an awakening. I seemed to be developing psychic ability, knowing when things are about to happen. This happens on a weekly basis. Now, once again... Well, that was kind of a cool story. Right, that's a cool story. Once again, though, she was asleep. She was in bed when this happened, right? So I, I can't right. I can't get past the fact that... But that's what happens with a lot of people because yeah. when you're asleep, you're vulnerable. Right. I, I can't get past the fact that you weren't in REM sleep, just coming out of REM sleep, and it was just a dream. And, you know, as well as I do, everyone, everyone out there knows as well as I do, you can have dreams that seem so real to you that you wake up crying. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Absolutely, but when you wake up, you know then that it was a dream. But do you? I mean, there's been times when you've had you've had some dreams. You've woke up and wanted to punch me, <laughs> right? Well, that's just because the anger spilled over <laughs> for what was in the dream. But I knew that it was a dream that I just woke up from. Oh, okay. I've never talked to anybody that had a realistic dream that woke up thinking they were that it was they were still in the dream. They, I mean, you you know when you're you wake up that it was a dream. Very well, it, it may take a but moment. But it's okay. realistic when yeah. it's happening. Yeah. I, I totally just had something pop into my head. This goes back to last week's episode when I was talking about my little, little, little goblin goblin demon yeah. thing at the side of my bed. Right. I don't know why I didn't think of this before. I just had something that pop into my head. I don't know if I, you want me to bring it up now because it has go nothing ahead. to do have with shadow people. Sure, go right ahead, yeah. When I was younger, like 14... My stepmother, who was kind of wacky, <laughs> all right, so okay. when she told me this story, I thought she was just crazy, right? because she was crazy anyway. Did and if she's listening, okay. yeah, you're probably still crazy. Uh-huh. But anyway, okay, my she got up every morning to make my dad breakfast, and he would go to work, mm-hmm. and then she would lay back down. She said she laid back down, was reading a book. This is like five in the morning. My bedroom was directly next to hers. There was a very short hallway in between the two bedrooms. She said she was reading her book. Something grabbed her shoulders and shook her violently. And she sat up on the edge of the bed. There was nothing there. She walked out the doorway and she said there was something. Well, she called it a demon. Okay. Sitting on the clothes hamper in this little short hallway between the two bedrooms. Yeah. Totally freaking out. She right. ran by, woke me up, drug me through um, my closet, which it was like a two-way closet in between two other bedrooms for where right. her daughters, my stepsisters were. Right. Grabbed us all, went out to the car. All, everyone's in their pajamas. She made me drive. Mm-hmm. Which I was 14 years old. Yeah. She made me drive this wow. big four door Cadillac, <laughs> and we went to my aunt's house. Right. Because there was a demon in the Had house. To get out of there. Yeah. Hmm. The thing is, I don't know what, what made me remember this, but when she described this thing sitting in the hallway on the clothes hamper, yeah. She it described was what I saw. It was the same thing. Okay, I get it. Yeah. So, Michelle, we might have to talk about this a little more later. Yeah, <laughs> maybe you should. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think so. Yeah, There's because something there. There's my because my experience wasn't the only time this little guy was involved in my life, and I don't know why I didn't think about this before. It just yeah, popped into my we're, head. We're we're opening up repressed memories now. See, this is good therapy. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so I did find one of the stories here that, now this person <clears throat> did have something happen when they were asleep, but they see these shadow people when they're awake. Um, it says, around five years ago, I would see those things everywhere, just standing and watching me. At first, it was just a quick glance at something shadowy moving among the palm trees. Then, maybe a year later, those things would appear out of nowhere and would just stare at me. I would look straight at them, and they would be unmoving. Later, they started moving around, moving from behind one tree to the other, which is kind of what Brandon said. Yeah. Um, but then one night, I woke up in the middle of the night and looked through my door, and there was just there was one just standing in the doorway watching me. It was horrifying, but I don't think they would hurt me or anyone else for that matter. They just seemed to be observing. But after I moved, they stopped appearing. Today, when I found that there were more people who had seen them, I feel more comfortable, and I feel that I really did see those things. I am seeing them again. They just still, they just stand there and observe. I am less scared, but I tried calling out to them, and no one is around. They just walk away. And there was a story that a, um, a young boy wrote in here. I'm not sure exactly where it was, but he he um, he sees the shadow person all the time, and so he decided to make it less scary, he gave it a name, a, yeah. a name that, a silly name, so it wouldn't be scary. Right. And he said that it helped a lot just to give it a name. But like, like this right here is talking about observing, and that's what um, a lot of the stories talk about, like they're just watching, just kind of checking things out. And the, the head tilt that Brandon and his buddy talked about, Yeah. you know, like, a curiosity tilt kind of thing is how Brandon explained it actually. He's right. like, you know, when you're looking at a dog and, and the dog looks at you like, what? And just tilts his head. Right. Um, that's what it reminded him of, like curiosity, like, well, what? Why are you looking at me kind of thing? And that's what uh, his buddy had said too. Right. Is that it was just kind of a tilting. So maybe they are just observing us. Maybe they are from another dimension or another planet. Maybe they are aliens and they're, they're just checking us out. And when we actually, if some people actually see them, they, maybe that's why they kind of, you know, disappear because a lot of stories talk about when, you know, you actually look at them, you see them out of the corner of your eye, and then when you turn and look at them, they're gone. they just kind of disappear. Yeah. They're gone. Well, it's like I say, you know, I, I, I'm sitting on my chair, I told you this before. I see. I can't tell if it's you or Brandon half the time when 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 I see you guys walk from one room to the other because you guys have the same kind of hair or whatever. But um, I'm in my chair, and usually it's. I'm gonna have to say I'm usually tired, kind of drifting off a little bit. Then I see that head pop up and pop back down just that quick, and and then I see over to the corner there. You know where the where the table is that retaining um, pillar is I see that head peek around and then jerk back real fast and he did say every now and again he will come out to the kitchen and he will look up to see you know see if I'm sitting there or what and he did say that but right. th yeah I have seen that that's one thing I will say that I have seen and maybe a couple of couple of other things outside just really quick but um, I still, I, I've never seen the Hat Man. I've never seen a cloaked figure. And when we were at Randolph, all you know, all those times, I never saw that little crawler. So I just don't know. I want to know again. I want to know what the difference is. What makes one different from the other? What's the purpose? What's the point? And maybe sh I'm holding up my quotation fingers. Quotes, yeah. Um, shadow people aren't all the same thing. Right. Yeah, I, um, like you said, one's helpful or, or whatever the word was. Um, one's malevolent. You got positive, negative, red-eyed, hooded, yeah. and yeah. the hat man. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm curious as to why, why there's a hat. Exactly. Why, I want to know what's... Why would there be a hat? Because, I mean, I clearly saw the hat. That, that stood out to me more than anything. I remember that the most. And you don't, think, you don't think that was Lee, right? 
You don't think that was the, the old miner? We live in a old, nope. we live nope. in old haunted coal mine. Absolutely not. Well, my what I call peepers that I had in my home, I always had a feeling that it was female. I never saw hat. I never saw eyes. I never saw hood. Well, now that I think about it, I guess it could have been a hood, but I just had a feeling it was more female because there was like. Because it wasn't just a round head. There was something there. Like so flowy. I assumed it was hair. Flowy hair. Okay. Um, but my neighbor, like I, I was talking to you before we did the show, um, mm-hmm. when we first bought our house, the people lived in, in a house behind us. And there was a teenage boy. Well, when I say teenage, he was probably 18. All right. Um, he told us a story about um, that. He said, oh, and this whole block's haunted. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, we've heard that before about in said, Brazil. Yeah. In Brazil, yeah, in Brazil. We've, haven't we? Yeah, we've heard that. Um, yeah. But he said that he and his mom had both seen a tall, dark figure with a hat. Right. Um, now, the funny thing is, and, I don't know if it's funny, but anyway, the thing is, is my wife's aunt used to live in that house like years ago when she, my wife was little, and she had seen the same tall figure with the, a hat. I haven't seen it. Like I, I said, the peakers in my house are just round head. Look it's round, just, round, well, it's, not it's, round, but yeah. I always feel it's female. Yeah. I guess it could have been like what people say call the in the, you know name the category or the category of being a hooded figure. Maybe yeah. it could have been. I just it wasn't a round head that I saw. It was something that had what I thought was hair, but maybe it could have been the hood. I don't right, know. Right. But um, yeah, they. My neighbors, who, which the house now has been empty for, I want to say, four years. So, like, four years ago is when he said that they had been seeing it. And then my wife said that when her aunt lived there, when she was little, so we're talking, and my wife will kill me for saying this, um, <laughs> 30 years ago. Oh, oh. Nah, you're <laughs> um, you're 30 down. years ago, when her aunt lived there, yeah. say, saw the same figure. Weird. The house is still empty. Maybe we should go over there. And set it up. We'll do it. We we are actually we're supposed to be uh, checking out the old uh, what's the, what's the name of the haunt there on, in Brazil? Oh, good grief! I have to look it up. Across from the library. Yeah. Yeah, across from the library. Yes. Yeah, um, the library. I don't. Remember. Shadow. Sh- uh, sh- mm, mm. Shattered. Not shattered nightmare. Don't say that. No. No. Um. Sh- Oh my God! I can't remember because I think the name changed since I've lived. In yeah, they they uh, they switched owners. People that were running it. Yeah, but there's a yeah. They've wanted us to at a rip. They wanted us to come investigate the place there because evidently uh, one of the props that was being used was an actual corpse what? of a little, little girl. What? Yeah. That, no, 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 no. Nope. Not no? A no. Not a corpse. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was. No, it had been donated. It was an actual skeleton. Oh, okay. Well, skeleton, fine. Okay, yeah. Well, yeah. It was a, well, no, there's a big difference. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a corpse at one point. It wasn't juicy. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah. But that, oh. <laughs> so it's, an, it's a human skeleton that was donated as a prop. Evidently, yeah. That's what they're saying. And Yeah, I can't remember what. It was, I think, the school, one of the a local college or something donated. I can't remember where it came from, though. But... What it, she's uh, you told me about this, so I'm just going to let you go ahead and run with it. What was the reason that she wanted us to come check it out? They said the employees there, the, the workers have had oh, experience. Good grief. That was, you know, that was like four months ago that we talked. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we wanted to wait till the holidays were all done. And yeah. well, we've got a lot of things. Day. We've had a lot of things going on. I, I, yeah, I have not. I have everything written down though. But yeah. I have to go back through my notebook and find that. Okay, but the, but the. the the gist of it is that um, people were being disturbed. Not only um, the, pe- the patrons, but also the people that work there were yeah, having experiences. Yeah. yeah, we may be talking about the same lady because I sold some uh, a mask and a prop to a lady that has something to do with that. Well, it could um, very well be. Yeah. yeah. So let's do this. Well, Bob, we're, yeah, we're just waiting. We've, we've had so much happen in the past few months there. We're, we're trying to get caught back up. We're finally, finally getting back on track here, it seems like. But, uh, 
Yeah, we've got a, a few people that have requested investigations, and some some of which we're not going to be able to talk about uh, just for client confidentiality, but in some way we'll, like, for example, hopefully the uh, haunted house here in Brazil. And that'll oh, be... Yeah. That'll yeah, be they, they won't mind it because that'll be... A public great season. publicity oh, for them. And I believe just to explain to someone that's not from Brazil, right. this is a local um, haunted house yeah. that's put on by... The, uh, <laughs> what's no, it called? The I think they, they're, they're, they're the same people that do the uh, Christmas in the park. Yes, yeah. that's yeah. who owns it. Okay, yes. yeah, yeah. So every Halloween they do this haunted house, and apparently it might be really haunted. Yeah, there's something actually there. Uh, evidently, we'll, we'll, you know, we're going to go check it out. Hopefully, if she hasn't given up on us, waiting, uh, waiting so long. But uh, yeah, I think that's going to be really cool. Uh oh, guess what that means. We're out of time. Already. We are right. out of time. Okay, well, I hope you guys were entertained by our lack of information then. <laughs> <laughs> any, uh, any comments, any questions, we'd love to hear from you. Go to the website or you can just go ahead and uh, email Michelle at michelle.deadzone at gmail.com. Let us know your thoughts. Let us know your experiences. We want to hear about it, and we'll talk, we'll talk about it later on. All right. Thank you, Michelle, for putting up with us and waiting on us for a half an hour to get back with you. That's all right. All right. No problem. I just have to hurry now and get to the bathroom. Okay. <laughs> all right. Yeah, all, all right. right. I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye. Bye, guys. This is Robbie Thomas, and you're listening to The Dead Zone 2019. Thank you.